In this past year, I have experienced more personal growth in my life than I have at any other time period. And everyone asks me what the secret is because they also, I guess, see this change that I have experienced. And I always say it is journaling. Whenever someone comes to me for advice about, you know, how to get over a problem or how to, you know, deal with the emotions better or just to, I guess, deal with anything that life throws at them, my first answer, well, maybe meditation might be my first answer, but with that goes journaling. Whether that's on your phone, on a book, as a voice note, as a video diary, whatever you choose it to be. The first thing that it helped with, if you've been on my channel before, you guys know that at the end of 2019, I unfortunately lost my grandmother, who I was very close to. And I honestly didn't realize until maybe mid-year last year, I didn't get to fully grieve and fully wrap my head around what happened because I had exams and then obviously COVID hit and I just went through other things in my personal life. And I think last year when everyone was sort of isolated from the rest of the world and you were forced to sort of sit with yourself and with your thoughts it can be both a blessing and a curse in a way because obviously you think of anything that has been worrying you or been you know turning your mood off or has not really brought any happiness to your life and so I felt that journaling really helped me to understand what had happened and really get in tune with how I felt with it. Obviously, everyone, for the most part, when someone dies, they are sad about it. But it was more so for me trying to find out what exactly made me feel, I guess, regretful or sad. And then going with COVID and everything, it was a very scary place. I mean, for me personally, I haven't ever experienced a time in my life where the whole world came to a standstill. Like, not just my own, you know, bubble of people, but I'm talking about the world as we know it. It really has changed in this year. And I realized only last year that I'm actually a person that can either be like all for change and really adapt really well just because my family has moved houses and provinces before and I've adapted really well just because I am a very sociable person once I get comfortable with my surroundings but I think with this it really was a very stringent change that no one was expecting and so me being a social person as well as being someone that's a visual learner and that really likes to interact with my lecturers and my fellow classmates being stuck in front of a computer by yourself for like almost 15 hours a day really didn't do well for my own mental health and who I am as a person because it was completely different to who I am in like normal life. So also dealing with my thoughts and feelings and trying to, you know, find how I fit into this new world and journaling still even now I'm not fully at that stage yet but it's really helped me to learn that there's just certain things unfortunately in life that you cannot change and you can't stress on what you cannot change and to rather just focus my energy more onto what I can change and really thrive in. That's why I started my YouTube channel or why I started yoga and meditation because in the time that I was waking up at 5.30 to go to university and coming back at almost 6 o'clock every single day, I really didn't have any time for myself. And then now in lockdown, I realized that I have to sort of change my focus and really take it as a time where I get to do all of the things that I've wanted to do and really focus on who I am as a person rather than having to rely on who I am inside the class or with my friends and really thrive in that I guess self-help sort of bubble. In terms of the spiritual, emotional, mental and physical benefits that I have received throughout this year are unmatched by anything that I've ever tried in the past when I've had the time to because any other time that, you know, if you talk to a parent or a family member or a friend or even a therapist, you can sometimes say when they're judging you or like you can judge their facial expressions or their tone. Whereas now, like you're writing or talking to an inanimate object. And so it doesn't have any way to show you facial expressions or judgments. So you really do feel like you're in a safe space when you're busy journaling. The most common question that I get is, how do I not feel stupid when doing it a lot of people tend to feel self-conscious when like writing in their journal because they feel like either they're just complaining or they just don't open up as easily as they would have liked to or be able to spill whatever has been on their mind first thing is to honestly just start because I was one of those people also that was like, how can journaling work? Like, I'm not even comfortable saying certain things about myself out loud, even if I'm by myself. And truly, once you start, 
you know, just writing whatever you're wanting to write. It's like it literally opens you up piece by piece, even if you don't intend it to. It just creates like a word flow out of you and your hand seriously cannot stop writing or your mouth cannot stop saying if you're making a video diary or a voice note. But let's rather talk about what can you actually do to start. So the first thing is to honestly just talk about your daily events from morning till evening. It doesn't matter if it's a small thing or a big thing, even if your day seemed boring and repetitive to you. Just write what you've done in the day because chances are one of those things is going to trigger an emotion or it's going to set off another thought that's been weighing on your head for quite some time. And usually when you pinpoint that, then you start writing about that thing and it just keeps on going. Another way to do it, which kind of sounds dumb, <laughs> but I swear it works, is to pretend like you're an author or a narrator that is talking about a character who basically mirrors everything about you. So sometimes what I do when I'm writing is I'll I'll say back what I'm writing like in my head and I'll be like saying it in an accent or I'll physically say it out just if obviously no one's around me and I'll just be saying it like quite eloquently so that it sounds like it's part of a movie or a narrator. That way you can vicariously live through whatever character you're talking about and not really feel too self-conscious about it. And then the last one is to find inspiration on Instagram or Pinterest or just on the internet of different quotes or prompts. These usually help to either stimulate a feeling in you or the prompt or quote can stimulate an event that has caused whatever is happening to you or you can relate it. And all three of these are just the things that I personally do and I have found that works. There's many different ways that you can try and journal or start journaling but these three obviously I'm talking from personal experience and I want to give you a personal account of that. I don't want to just tell you all the different types of journaling and things that have been done that I haven't tried out because I have no way to relate to you especially if you're going to ask me questions in the comments. I want to be able to answer them as well as I can with personal experience rather than just you know spewing facts at you and just telling you all the different types of journaling and saying here you go you can do it. But all three of this, talking about your daily events, using a quote or a prompt to journal about, and or writing as if you're a narrator or an author of a book, talking about a character that emulates whatever you're going through. All three of these are amazing ways to start journaling, but the best way to get the full, I guess, fruit out of them is to do something called shadow journaling, which is what I personally do and has honestly been so beneficial to me. Once any of these three kind of stimulate an event or emotion in you, continuously ask yourself how and why until you can't anymore. This shadow journaling will help you get down to the root cause of whatever is causing your emotion or your feeling or your off mood or whatever is going on in your life. And chances are things that you didn't think off the top of your head, so things that were in your subconscious or that you hadn't fully thought of yet, will be unlocked and you'll continue digging deeper. And that's how you'll continue to explore whatever feeling that is. Get to know it really well, what your triggers are for instance, or how better you think you can manage that situation. So those three things along with shadow journaling is like the first part of my journaling that I have. So basically I have two journals. This is where I write down my first two parts of journaling. And then I have a second journal, which is basically where I write my third part of journaling, which I'll get to just now. So the first part that I talked about was, you know, the shadow journaling, the getting to know yourself, sort of delving deeper into your emotions. And the second part, which I do at the end of journaling in this book on a day, is I do gratitude lists. I do the top three things that I am most grateful for in this life or in the day. And when I started, they were quite broad, you know, thankful for this food, thankful for my dog, thankful for my bed. But as you go on and as I went on, you want to sort of look for those smaller detailed things that you should be grateful for or things that you take for granted or to not repeat what you have, for instance, been grateful for in the last two weeks. You want to really try and find things that don't necessarily make you feel like you want to have gratitude for, like running water or warmth or shelter, or even if it's like your mom making your favorite meal. And for me, this is one of the most crucial parts of my journaling besides shadow journaling, because when you focus on what you're grateful for, the things that you're more upset about or the things that are, you know, not causing you to have a good feeling about an event or yourself, 
it really tends to help you focus more on what's good in your life and it's also good because it leads on to the third thing which I use my second journal for and that is manifesting. I don't do my manifestations every single day. I more so do it sometimes when I meditate. But when I do want to write down my manifestations and things like that, it's usually at the beginning of the week as well as the beginning of a month. I won't go into too much detail about manifesting because I have made a whole video about the law of attraction and manifesting and how it integrates in with gratitude. So I will link that up in the description below as well as the card. I would 100% recommend you watching both this video and that one to get the full picture of how to journal, why it's beneficial, how you should do it, why you should do manifestations and gratitude and things like that. You don't need fancy books, you don't need fancy pens, you don't need a fancy place, you don't need a fancy playlist to start journaling. You literally just need a piece of paper and any pen that you got. Personally, I just use whatever journals I've had like sitting at the back of my cupboard for like the last three or four years. And I use the exact same stationery that I use as university. And the second thing that I wanted to let you guys know is that you can literally do journaling at any time of the day. Personally, I do it in the morning or the evening just because then you have like fresher thoughts or you write fully about whatever has happened in your day. But I have also written sometimes here and there in the middle of the day or when I feel like I really need it or there's something that I want to talk about. Please let me know if you try out any of these types of journaling techniques. And if you've been journaling for longer than I have, I'm always open up to suggestions and finding new ways to do it. So please comment them down below. I hope that you guys have a wonderful week filled with the most love, light, happiness and good journaling. Love you guys. Bye.